Hello, my name is Maria de Souza. I'm the founder of Posture Queen and I teach all things good posture and movement for good health and elegance. Today I'm coming back to you with another Feldenkrais lesson that might help you with sciatic nerve pain. So give it a try and see what it does for you. Just a little bit of anatomy. What's the sciatic nerve? Sciatic nerve is attached to your lower back, so it's different arms. The sciatic nerves has different arms and they attach to your lower back and then it comes down as one nerve through the back um, of your leg, so it passes your pelvis, your buttocks, through the back of your neck and then it branches again and it goes all the way down to your toes. It's the biggest, longest um, nerve in the body. And what causes sciatic nerve? It's something happening in your lower back, in the discs. So it might be um, damage in your discs that is inflating that um, br the branches, any of the branches of your sciatic nerve. Uh, it might be pressure that is happening in the nerve, so there's lots of um, causes of um, causes for your sciatic nerve pain, but it's all on your lower back, and it's usually down one side because that's where the problem is um, is happening more. So um, the inflammation can. Um, it's probably happened more one side than the other. So it's very unusual that you have the same pain coming through the same um, in both legs. So it's normally um, mostly in one side of your body or one side of your leg. And you can feel it around your buttocks, you can feel it in your lower back, you can feel it around um, the back of your um, thigh and the back of the knee or the feet, the foot, the toes. So uh, the pain can be anywhere really, depends what's happening with you. So that's the sciatic nerve and to, nowadays it's a very common, uh, common, common um, ailment and mainly because of um, the amount of sitting you, we are doing that is putting too much pressure in the lower back. And the sciat sciatic nerve is one of the things that is suffering from too much sitting. So today I'm going to give you a movement, a lesson that might help you with relieve your sciatic nerve pain. So give it a try. So let's lie down on our backs. Oh. And remember that if um, your chin is far away from your chest and if that this feels uncomfortable, have a blanket, a folded blanket to bring under your head so that your chin is kind of parallel to your chest and that your head feels comfortable. Okay? If you think you don't need it, then you don't need it. But only use it if um, you your chin is like this and you feel very uncomfortable. If your head is comfortable on the floor then you don't need anything. Now just lie down and stay here for a moment and just notice how things feel for you as you lie on your back. So if you have sciatic pain just notice how is it now and in this moment where do you feel it? Just notice those parts of your body that are uncomfortable and notice those that are comfortable. So just have a sense for what's there for you today. Notice the pressure of your, of your body on the floor. Notice how much of yourself is, is in contact with the floor. You can start from the heels then the back of your legs, your pelvis, your buttocks in contact with the floor. And you might feel that one side feels different to the other and that's okay. Just notice what's there for you today. 
And have a sense for your head lying down, notice the pressure on the back on the back of your head. And have a sense for your head and neck in relationship to your spine as well. Okay, and just keep um, mental notes of, or, of um, what's going on for you at this precise moment. What feels comfortable, what doesn't feel comfortable, the difference between the left and the right side of yourself. Okay, and from here we're going to bend one leg. And if you're feeling um, some discomfort because of sciatic nerve pain, start with a leg that is healthier, the leg that, that is not suffering so much. Okay? And from you, you're going to start by rocking your pelvis back and forth or up and down. So as you rock to um, one way, you arch the lower back and notice that what's happening with your head, with your chin. And as you arch, as you move um, rock the other way or move the other way, you press the lower back onto the floor ever so gently. So there's no much effort going on here. There's slightly effort because you need to move the pelvis um, back um, and forward, so up and down. But you're not doing a huge um, effort to press the lower back on the floor or to arch the back. So just gently rock up and down or back and forth. So as you rock one way, you arch the lower back and as you rock the other way, you press or you feel the lower back um, in contact with the floor. And carry on this way, slowly and gently, rocking back and forth. And notice what's, notice, feel, notice the um, movement of the pelvis traveling all the way to your neck, to your head. So notice how your head is communicating with the pelvis. You probably sense your chin moving up and down. But you're not making the head to move. You're only concentrating on your pelvis. So you only, the effort is in the pelvis. Effort between brackets, because you're not making much of an effort, but you are in making enough effort to um, move the pelvis to rock the pelvis up and down. And that is how things feel for you as you rock. One way you arching the lower back and the other way you pressing the lower back onto the floor. Also notice your long leg moving and sliding on the floor. Breathe in and out. Notice if you are creating any unnecessary tension anywhere, maybe in your face, in your facial muscles, maybe in your jaw, maybe your arms, your hands. Just um, check yourself. So there is no need to hold any tension anywhere. So now and then remind yourself to check yourself, just to make sure you're not holding an, any unnecessary tension, that you're not straightening anything. It's a simple movement, although it might be quite unfamiliar for you because it's not a movement that we incorporate in our lives every day.
but it's a very natural movement. Rocking one way, press the lower back on the floor, rocking the other way, you arch the lower back. Not so much movement you can feel in your chest. Breathe in and out, make sure you're not holding your breath. Rocking back and forth or up and down. Have a sense for your foot as well. Ground on the floor, the foot needs to do something as well to help with the movement of the pelvis. So it's important that your foot is in the right place to support this movement in the pelvis. Okay, and then you can let this go. Stay here for a moment just to sense things and then bring the knee towards the floor and slide that leg long and stay here for a moment, just notice how things feel for you and then you're going to bend down the knee so bend the knee to the side slide the heel towards your buttocks and then lift the knee up so now we're going to do the other side The same movement, rocking, arching and then rocking the other way, pressing the lower back on the floor. Your foot on the floor needs to be in the right place to support this movement. So see if you can feel the whole of the sole of your foot in contact with the floor as you rock back and forth. And again, notice the movement traveling all the way to your neck. The things on this side might feel different. So notice what the difference is for you. Breathe in and out. Stay with yourself. So if your mind takes you away from the present moment, all you have to do is to catch yourself, or catch your mind and then bring it back time and time again, back to your body, back to your breath, feeling and sensing, notice the movement, the movements that are happening in your chest, in your ribs, the neck, the head. Notice your chin moving up and down with the movement of the pelvis. Okay, and then you can let this go. Just stay here for a moment. Just same thing yourself, your pelvis, your back, your legs. Okay, and then bring that knee towards the floor and slide the heel away and coming 
bringing the leg down for a little rest. Notice how things feel for you. And then you're going to bend the other leg once again. Find the right place for your foot. And this time what you're going to do, you're going to rock from side to side. Okay, so you're going to press that foot on the floor so that you lift the pelvis ever so slightly so that it rocks to one side and then bring it down and then you lift the other side of the pelvis to rock to the other side. So with the long leg it's a little bit more difficult. Do what you can, but it is possible. It doesn't need to be a big movement. It is in fact a small movement. So you're rocking from side to side. So the sides of the pelvis lift away from the floor ever so slightly for you to rock to one side and then rock to the other side. The knee that is up stays, doesn't swing. Okay, so it stays pointing the sky and it stays as still as possible as you rock to one side. Notice what's happening in your spine. Is your head going ever so slightly to the side as well? If it's not, don't worry too much about it. But if it is, allow that movement to travel all the way to your neck. And if the head wants to go to the side a little bit, that's a good thing. And if it doesn't, maybe you are unconsciously I'm fixing your head. Just let everything go and just notice what happens um, if you can feel the movement traveling all the way to the top of your head, to the spine, so that the head also moves ever so slightly to the sides. Okay. So on this side you have the foot to help you to lift the pelvis, on the other side there's no match. Maybe you know, I can feel my heel presses on the floor ever so slightly on that side to help me to bring the pelvis up, but it's not so easy. You just do what you can. Breathing in and out. If you find that your head is fixed, that it doesn't move at all, and see if you can create a little invitation for the head to move with the pelvis. So it won't be a huge movement, because we're not making a huge movement with the pelvis either. Let's see if you can sense a tiny little movement going on in your neck, in your head. Notice what you have to do on, on the side that the leg is long. Notice what you need to do to lift that pelvis ever so slightly away from the floor. Remember to keep the knee that is up. Keep it still as much as you can meaning that it doesn't swing from side to side. And then bring this to a close. Stay here for a moment. Say the same feeling yourself. And bring the knee towards the floor and slide the foot away. Stay here for a moment. Notice how things feel in your pelvis, in your legs, your back.
Okay, and then you're going to bend both knees. Bring the foot on, on the floor. And what you're going to do, you're going to do the same rockings with the pelvis that you did at the very beginning with one leg long. Now you have both legs up. So as you rock one side, you arch the lower back. And as you rock the other side, the other way, you press the lower back onto the floor. So rocking back and forth, or up and down. Notice the movement traveling all the way to your neck. Notice what's happening with your chin. So one way the, uh, the lower back arches, the other way the lower back presses onto the floor. Breathing in and out. Okay, and then bring this to a close. Keep your knees up. Now we're going to rock from side to, from side to side, just like you did before. So as you press one foot, you lift that side of the pelvis and the pelvis rocks to one side, the weight shifts and then bring it down and then press the other foot and then the weight shifts to the other side. But remember to keep your knees as quiet as possible, the knees are pointing up. You're just rocking from side to side, so it's not a big movement. Notice the movement traveling all the way to your neck. Notice what your head is doing. Are you unconsciously fixing your head in the middle or are you allowing the movement to be fluid? If your head is not moving, see if you can create that invitation without forcing the head to go anywhere, but create that invitation for the head to communicate with the movement of the pelvis. So make sure that your knees are not swinging from side to side, but they are still or as still as possible. It's not um, from what I hear from my classes, from my clients, it's not an easy movement to do, it's not very familiar. So if you find it tricky, don't worry, most people do as well. Do what you can, bring your awareness to your pelvis, stay there with your awareness. Not as it feels different as you rock to one side, to the other side. What is the difference? Feel that shift of the weight in your pelvis, in your back, the shoulder blades. Okay, and then bring this to a close. Stay in the <coughs> Excuse me. Stay in the um, neutral position for a moment, just feel yourself here, feel your pelvis. Okay. Now you're going to take the pelvis around in a circle. So full circle. 
start with or every direction comes natural to you. Imagine that you have a clock sitting on top of your pelvis and you're taking the pelvis around the dial, going through every single hour. So visualize the hours on the clock. So let's say that six o'clock is towards your feet. Is on the end of your feet, and the six o'clock is um, at the head end, and then you have nine o'clock to your right and three o'clock to your left, and you're just taking the pelvis around that dial. You see if you can visualize every single hour on the clock as you pass the pelvis through. Again, see if you can keep your knees as um, quiet or as quiet as possible. Okay, and then bring this to a close. Stay here for a neutral, um, in a neutral position, position for a moment. And then you're going to take the pelvis around the other way. So whenever you're ready, start going the other way around. And the other way around might feel very different. Just notice that for yourself. Again, keeping your knees as quiet as possible. Notice the movements in your chest, in your head, notice what movement the head is doing. Is it following the pelvis or mirroring the pelvis? Notice if you are creating an, any unnecessary tension anywhere in your body, maybe your hands, your arms, your shoulders, maybe your facial muscles. Okay, and then let this go. Stay here with the feet on the floor, knees up. Sense yourself a little bit as you lie here. Now we're going to press both feet on the floor and going to lift the pelvis away, extending the knees, both knees at the same time. I'm extending the knees away and lift the pelvis as high as you can go comfortably without forcing anything. And then bring it down, 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 slowly and gently. Imagine a very old-fashioned lift going up, up, and up, and up, and up. So go up with the pelvis, extending the knees away. Going as far as, as high as it is comfortable possible for you, and then bring it down, and down, and down, and down. Very slow, old-fashioned lift. Okay, and do that a few more times, lifting, pressing the foot, lifting the pelvis, extending the knees away, notice what's happening with your neck, with your chin. And bring it down and down and down. Next time you come up, stay there. 
So bring the pelvis up as high as you can go comfortably. And from here you're going to swing the pelvis side to side. So you're rocking or swinging the pelvis from side to side. The knees are quiet, so the knees are not moving or swinging with the pelvis, just the pelvis swinging from side to side. Breathing in and out. Okay, and then bring the pelvis to the middle and down and down and down and down. Okay, have a little rest here. And then lift the pelvis again. Extend the heels away and bring it down. Slowly and gently, do that a few more times, press the foot, the feet, and extend the knees away, lift the pelvis. Notice if the pelvis can come a little bit higher now. Lift, lift, and lift. Okay, next time you bring the pelvis up, stay there one, stay there once again. And you're going to do the same thing with the pelvis. Rocking from side to side. Stay up for as long as it is comfortable. Rocking from side to side. Okay, and then you can bring everything down slowly, slowly, slowly. Good. Then press the foot and lift a few more times the pelvis, extending the head, the knees away. Notice it's easier, if it feels easier now to lift the pelvis away from the floor. Okay, next time you bring the pelvis down, let everything go, stay here for a moment. Then bring one knee at the time towards the floor, slide the foot away and can bring the legs down and stay here for a moment, just feeling yourself. That's the end of this lesson. Just notice how things feel now for you comparing to the very beginning of this lesson. Notice your right and left sides. Notice if um, where there was discomfort at the very beginning, notice if that discomfort is still there or if, it's, if it is gone. And you can lie here for as long as you want, but I'm going to finish this here. So let me know um, what this lesson did for you. I'd love to hear from you. Put your comments below so that we can all benefit from your experience and support each other in this community. Thank you so much for doing this lesson and I'll see you around at another video. Bye bye now.